Hello everyone. Here are top 5 Emmanuel Marmari short videos. Number 5. When you trust this guy, when you entrust your life with this guy, one thing for, for sure, 100%, you will never be disappointed. Therefore, love will always be rekindled and alive and burning. Jesus came to heal the broken heart because say, Jesus is saying, I'm the only one that can give you that true genuine love that no one ever can. If you take me, you're taking my love. And when you take my love, your heart will never be broken. Number four. I'm getting old. It's amazing when you read in the gospel according to St. John chapter 13. Now the Lord Jesus is still in the flesh. The disciples and a lot of people saw him as a human being like any other human being. The Lord Jesus in John 13 at the last supper, he, he ties his waist and then he goes and washes the feet of his disciples. Now, as a human being, the Lord, as the human being, if he washes the feet of other human beings, you will say, well, that's a very beautiful gesture, but it's okay. You know, it's, there's nothing out of the ordinary about it because he is a human being and he's just washing the feet of other human beings. He's a very humble man, but he is a man. John the Beloved, who used to put his head on the chest of the Lord, and he is the heart beats of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Out of all the disciples, he, he, he heard the heart beats of the Lord. He put his head on his chest without any fear. In the book of Revelation, John the Beloved sees the Lord Jesus for the first time ever in his glory. What happens to John the Beloved? He says, and I fell on the, on the ground as if I were dead. Jono, Khabibi, you used to put your head on his, on his chest and you never feared. You never fell on the ground as if you were dead. Why? He is the same Jesus. What happened to you? He says, no, it is the first time ever I see him in his glory. His voice is like many waters. His eyes cut through the veils and those dark places. Everything is vividly clear before him. His feet like copper in an inferno and it's not burning. I've never seen Jesus in this awesomeness. Out of fear, I fell as if I were dead because he is too awesome to be looked at. Imagine this, in His glory, the book of Revelation says at the end, He says, when He sees us, the piece of dust, His children, coming into His kingdom, He will get up from His throne, the King of all kings, the Lord of all lords. In His glory He is now. Huh? He's not just a human being on earth washing our feet. No, in His glory where John fell as if he were dead, He will get up and He will welcome us. You know, when you get up and welcome someone, how do you do? What kind of a gesture? You bow. Hello. Thank you for coming. Please come on in. You bow. In His glory, He will get off His throne and He will bow before us out of love and joy and says, Welcome my children. Come and sit on my throne and I will serve you. Now, Lord, I'll take it for you to serve me while in the flesh, but I can't take it for you to serve me while in your glory. It's too much. Why are you doing it? Because I am daddy and daddy is all love. And when it comes to love, I'll do crazy things. Even the angels go speechless. This awesome God, so humble, 
so weak because I love you. I am not saying that Jesus Christ is the only true God because I'm a Christian. It has absolutely got nothing to do that I'm a Christian. It has absolutely got nothing to do with, the, with this outfit that I'm wearing. It has got absolutely nothing to do with it. I say it with a loud voice, with absolute confidence, with no hesitation, no reservation. Jesus Christ is the only true God that visited this earth over 2000 years ago. You know why? Because he revealed himself to me. He made himself known to me. I know him. I know him. Yes, I'm a sinner, but I know Jesus. I just don't not only believe in him, but I know him. I've seen him. He is the truth. He is real. He is not a myth, sto myth story. He is not. He is not a myth. He is the truth. Number two. What is happening in the 21st century is nothing but evil. Please, I'm saying this with love and respect. I'm not judging. I'm not saying anything, but I know what's happening because my Lord revealed to me what's happening. I don't take anything from no one. I take it from the Lord. I pray for everyone, but I'll say what you're doing is evil, but I'll pray for you. I love you, but I hate your deed because it's evil. So please. Corona came and then the pandemic, the pandemic, and then the vaccination and then the booster shots and get a life, right? Yeah, get a life. When someone like Bill Gates has a hand in it, automatically a question mark has to be put. When someone like George Soros, but they, these are puppets. There are bigger boys than these. They're behind the scene, but Jesus sees them all. Well, they have no idea. The Lord is surprising them. They think they're going to surprise the Lord. My goodness. Satan has laughed at them, bluffed them, blinded them. The Lord has a surprise for Satan and his followers. If they do not repent, they will end up in a place. They will regret it forever. It'll be too late to come back from it. Too late. All the money, all the money of this rich people, that think they can control the world and they want to bring this new world order and force it upon the, the, the masses. They think they can do whatever they want. They have no idea. They are playing with fire. There is one true divine God in heaven, the creator of everything that is visible and invisible, the creator of everyone and everything. This God is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I say this not because I'm a Christian, because this is the truth. This is the truth. This God is always in control. So do whatever you want. Jesus is laughing at your Satan. But the Lord uses Satan to discipline his church who has denied him and walked away from him. Where is that humility? Man, it's missing. Number one. But today, anybody speaks the truth is persecuted, isn't it? The moment you speak the truth, the whole world will stone you. The whole world. The closest people to you will go against you. Your friends will desert you. Your family members will go against you because you speak the truth. The truth is like shedding the light on a dark place and darkness will always hate the light. Will always. The Lord says, I am the light of the world, meaning I am the correction of this crooked 
and twisted world. I came to correct it. You know, when you work in a company and you're working with loyalty, with honesty, with dignity, with, with everything beautiful, some of the employees there, work colleagues, they want to do things, you know, under the table, over and around the table. But you want to do everything in the light. You don't want to twist things. You don't want to falsify nothing. What are they going to do? They'll, they'll approach you first nicely. This is Satan, you see? They'll approach you first nicely and say, Hey, brother, you want to go out for lunch with us? Oh, yeah, thank you. And then you sit with them and they'll say, Look, we need to make it happen. Okay, so fix it. But I can't. Oh, come on, please fix it. But I can't. You can't. Next time, they're not going to be nice. They'll do everything to make sure you get sacked from that job. That should not be the case in the church. <laughs> that should not be the case. In the church, we should, we should be one family. We're supposed to be one family. And we should teach one another, remind one another, enlighten one another, embrace one another, not stab one another. Not stab one another, my beloved.